Hey everyone, welcome to Star Wars Holocron. I hope you're all having a great day today. Today we're going to be discussing unconventional fighting techniques. Some of the things we are going to go over today are a summary of things I already went over in my other videos. The rest are completely new. So with that being said, welcome to part 9 of our combat series. Let's begin. Different Jedi duelists acquired a wide variety of combat methods that either preceded or coexisted with the traditional Jedi practices. Some of the more obscure styles of warfare, like Sokan in mounted lightsaber combat, were even made accessible for training inside the Jedi Temple. Furthermore, Jedi were urged to learn supplementary combat techniques or construct hybrid fighting forms to complement their main fighting style. Such fighting techniques may vary from simple adaptations of existing methods to complex combination of many techniques. Sarisu, the pure foundation of Form 6, was recommended for study for Naiman Masters. For instance, Obi-Wan started learning Surisu to make up for the shortcomings of Ataru's defenses. However, several fighters, most notably Count Dooku, advised against using such a mixed approach. Dooku encouraged the employment on unconventional techniques, but he singled out Makashi and dismissed hybrid duelists as dabblers who lacked expertise. He actually went to such an extent as to criticize Jedi Battle Masters, saying that they were trying to do overkill by becoming experts in numerous fighting styles at once, and that a specialist in a single style would still be able to defeat them. The fact that Darth Vader, a Form 5 expert, was responsible for the killing of Battle Master Syndralig lends credibility to Dooku's theory. Darth Vader, after being fitted with his life support and armor, evolved into a hybrid fighter who, over time, incorporated methods from all seven lightsaber forms into his own individualized Form 5 variety, moving in and out across forms as needed. Form 0 was not a method of lightsaber dueling, but rather a code of conduct. It was intended to illustrate the concept that a Jedi should have the discretion to determine when to employ force versus when to seek a peaceful resolution. Yoda established this principle to tackle the fact that Jedi often struggle to control the impulse to resort to aggressive negotiations, preferring to employ a more refined Jedi ability like the Jedi mind trick. This approach was utilized to find a peaceful resolution. In the days of the new Jedi Order, Jedi Master Kyle Katan taught his pupils, including Jaden Kor and Rosh Pennon, that the mere presence of an unlit lightsaber might be sufficient to turn prospective adversaries into people willing to cooperate. Faye was also renowned for her refusal to ever display a lightsaber. She preferred to promote peace via the Force. But if conflict was inevitable, she would utilize the Force alone to defend herself. It's doubtful that she even had a lightsaber with her. According to the principles of Form Zero, a Jedi's lightsaber proficiency should be reserved for only the most dire of circumstances. The Jedi Masters popularized this theory of lightsaber combat and gave it the name Form Zero to emphasize how important it is as the cornerstone on which all other forms of the art are based on. Practitioners of Form Zero believed that training Jedi fighters in new forms of battle was bad for their technique and ethical behavior since it would increase the likelihood that Jedi would choose lightsaber fighting over negotiation when faced with a conflict. Next we have Trisp Zest. It's a kind of airborne combat that combines aspects of Form 7 with those used in the Skytree Warfare. The Skytree, or Windborn in their language, were a flying humanoid race native to the world of Sky. Merit 5 in the Galactic Empire it was called. They were considered one of the most attractive races because of their height, muscularity, and slenderness. The Skytree had earned a name for themselves over the ages as brave soldiers and skilled bards. The flying force-sensitive Majestrix of Sky, Caris, created Trips S, a sort of aerial combat fighting technique. The Skytree referred to ground troops as walkers, a derogatory term, and Trips S, which meant heart palpitation in their language, would give the fighter the ability to use the benefits of flight and warfare. The side cha method for beheading walkers was heavily emphasized in Trips S. While Trips S offered several benefits, it also left the user vulnerable to assaults carried out by grounded units. Kyle Katan took advantage of this vulnerability during their combat on Rusan when he dove to the ground and swiped his lightsaber overhead at Ma as he flew over him, injuring Ma. Whenever sitting on a mount, like a tauntaun or a powered means of transport like a swoop bike, Jedi and Sith would take part in mounted lightsaber combat. The duelist could only use one hand in this style of warfare since the other was required to control the mount. 
Dueling from a mount meant using low lunges and diagonal slashes and arcs to compensate for the duelist's height advantage. The duelist had to put in additional work to safeguard and manage the mount, but the advantages of fighting from an elevated position and at a faster pace were worth it. Due to the advantage point, while the mounted version of lightsaber battle had some similarities with the aerial tripsess lightsaber fighting system, the Jedi had far less mobility in the former. The lightsaber was additionally useful for incapacitating other mounted troops, something the Jedi could do by lashing out at either of the mounts, particularly effective against swoop bikes or the rider. Finally, the Jedi could employ the lightsaber to shield themselves from blast of fire and other dangers while on top of their mount. I will expand further on telekinetic lightsaber combat in another video. This will just be an overview. Fighting with a lightsaber using the use of force-based telekinesis was known as telekinetic lightsaber combat. It needed a high level of skill and practice with the force to accomplish. The most apparent benefits of this style of combat were the elimination of range limitations and the possibility of using many lightsabers at once. The saber toss was the most fundamental use of telekinesis in lightsaber combat. Users might hurl their lightsaber in a boomerang way by directing the trajectory of the blade across the air with the force, slicing past obstructions and catching their opponents off guard. A skilled practitioner of this method can utilize their lightsaber to launch it into the air and steer it in midair, or they could just let it float in one position. Jedi Knights used the three-part Suma lightsaber fighting technique, which focused on rotations. The Ton Suma included somersaulting as a fighting technique, the En Suma, or cartwheeling technique, was another, Jung Suma, which meant spinning. The Grandmaster was a shining example of Form 4's expertise because of the force-enhanced leaps and circular Sumar techniques. There are records in the Jedi Temple's database attesting to Yoda having given demonstrations of the form and use before the Clone Wars. Lu Ma is a seldom used lightsaber style that was taught to Grievous and his IG-100 Magna Guards by Count Dooku. Almost little has been discovered about Lu Ma other than the fact that one of these initiates used it to defend against a Surisu move. Dune Mach was a common Sith strategy of deception in mind games. The user focused mostly on taunts designed to bring out an opponent's insecurities and make them lose focus during combat. Particularly amongst the Sith of previous times, the patience and self-control required to carry out Dune Mach properly were uncommon among the Sith. Darth Bane's victory against Serac when they were both enrolled in the Sith school on Korriban is often cited as the perfect instance of this strategy. By prolonging the fight, he took advantage of Serac's lack of stanima, and he showed great restraint by not delivering a decisive strike as soon as Serac started making mistakes. Bane, unable to settle for a short triumph, instead attempted to thoroughly destroy Serac. Allowing the enticing approach of victory to feed his wrath and releasing it in a massive strike that immobilized Serac and ended the combat, for a more in-depth look at Dunmok, check out my other video on Dunmok. So as you can see, Combat isn't just limited to straightforward lightsaber fighting. There are a wide range of uncommon techniques used in conjunction with lightsaber fighting, such as mounted lightsaber fighting, or standalone techniques like Dune Mock. In some forms, like Form Zero, don't encourage any sort of violence whatsoever, prioritizing peace over violence. Thanks everyone for watching today's video. If you liked the video, please force push those like and subscribe buttons below. Have a fantastic day, and may the force be with you, always.